today's video is going to the dogs, dog bandanas in particular, that fit right over their collar. We are going to make these out of simple squares of fabric. This is one of my most viewed uh, videos on YouTube, but I've gotten a little feedback that it moves a little too quickly. So today I'm gonna talk you through it and I'm gonna show you and explain the different size squares that you need for small, medium, or large dog collars. I took the small collar out of the one that I had already made and showed you just so you can have a visual of the three sizes. And we're mostly looking at the widths, not the color, nothing else. So let's talk about the squares that we need for each of these. We will start with the small, which is this one. You're gonna start with an eight inch square. So that's pretty easy to find out of scrap fabric. Then you're going to turn it on its side so it's a diamond. And I like to line it up on my grid just to make sure that I have everything straight. So these two points will become this bottom point of the bandana, and these two are going to be folded, cut, and sewn to make the channel for the collar. So for the eight inch square, we are going to fold the sides in one and three quarter inches. So what I like to do is take my handy dandy heat erasable pen and take a ruler. And the reason I get my square lined up on this grid is so that if I line my ruler up on the grid, I know I will be drawing straight on the corners of this fabric. So I have it lined up to one and three quarters. I'm gonna draw a line. And I know that's dark, but it doesn't matter because once we hit it with an iron, it will disappear. We're gonna do this on both sides. So we have the first one marked. We're gonna be folding that under. Now let's take the second one. The medium size, you need a 10 by 10 fabric, which is perfect because if you like buying these stackers, I mean, look at how many bandanas we could make out of this stacker of all 10. So I'm gonna do this one, it's little flowers, but I do wanna show you one thing to consider if you are using stackers. This is directional this way, but when we turn it this way and fold it and it becomes, the bandana, it just doesn't look good because everything's sideways, it's not going this way. So don't use a directional fabric if it's already pre-cut into a stacker. Now, if you wanna use the directional fabric, you can always cut it, but just make sure you cut it so that the direction is going this way. Hopefully that makes sense. But anyway, that's gonna save me some time. I don't have to cut the 10 inch, I just have to line it up on my grid. And then for this one, we are going to fold the sides in two inches. So I'm just going to put my ruler two inches in, draw my line. And this one has to go in a little bit more because this collar is wider than this one. So we're going to be needing a wider channel. So we have the small one marked, the medium one marked. And now we need the large one. So the large dog bandana needs a 12 by 12 square. That's for this one. And again, we're just gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna line it up on my mat. And this one we're going to fold in two and a half inches. The side we're gonna mark, line it up on a grid so that it's easier to just double check. One, two and a half. Cause you're using your ruler and also I'm also using the grid to make sure I'm drawing these lines in the correct place. Okay, large, medium, small. Let's grab the iron. So we're going to iron and fold on all of these lines that we just drew and the lines are going to disappear when the heat hits them. So you wanna make sure that you fold that over and kind of finger press it right on that line because once we hit it with heat, the line will be no more and you will not know where it was. Of course, you can always remeasure, being a little more dramatic than I need to be. Just do that. And then if you have a quilter's clapper or tailor's clapper and you wanna use it, you're just gonna iron and then just press that down. It absorbs the heat, it absorbs any steam if you're using steam in your iron. And my favorite part is it makes the fabric not so hot so you're not burning your fingers. So we're gonna do this fold on all three of these bandanas. 
triangles are folded in for all three sizes to make the channel on our dog bandana. So I'm gonna move the ironing board for a minute and we are going to trim again. Now this is where sometimes people think I do it a little weird, but I'm going to give you the reason why. I like to make the marks from the, the points and, and press it in once first before trimming, because what we're gonna do is we're going to fold this and fold this to this line so that we can sew just like this. So you'll see that's folded and folded so we have no raw edges. You can be more exact if you already have that crease set. I'm gonna line that crease up on a grid line so that it's easy to see where that half inch actually is. So fold on the crease line, open it up. You might notice I have quite a few sizes of rulers and it isn't necessary. If you're a beginning sewer, you can get one ruler and you will be good to go. If you do that, let's see, if you're just starting out, I would get a ruler like this. This is 24 and a half inches, something big that will be straight all the way across fabric if you buy it by the yard, because you can always work with that with anything, but I'm gonna show you here. So just when you're using, doing smaller things, it's a little bit more, oh, my fabric moved. It's a little bit more cumbersome to move around when you're cutting smaller pieces. That's why I'll usually grab a smaller ruler, but this works just fine. You can always add more ruler sizes as you continue with your craft or not, totally up to you. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to fold that into the crease and I'm going to finger press it, which basically means just press down with your fingers to kind of get it to stay. And then I'm gonna fold it again to where we had ironed that fold, adjust if necessary, then press that. So that is creating the channel, this part, for our dog bandana. So I'm gonna do that on each side of each bandana. And if you wanna put a pin or clip on there, you can. Usually don't bother with that. We're going to be sewing the part we just folded down so that it's not gonna pop up as you put your collar through the channel. And since we're going to be sewing from the back side of the fabric, and you don't want a, a big old bird's nest not here by mistake, I'm gonna show you how to pull up the bobbin thread. It's one of my favorite tricks, so you might have seen this before. You're going to hold the top thread, and then you're going to put the foot down, put the needle down, lift the needle back up and give it a little tug. That gets the bobbin thread up to the top. So you can be holding both. Then you're going to put them under the foot. Now let me try and do it this way. And then my machine does have an automatic knotter. So I'm just going to do a knot and I'm holding these two strings tight while I do that so that they can't get sucked back down and create that bird's nest. Now, if your machine doesn't knot on its own, you you're gonna go forward two or three stitches and then backward two or three stitches. Now I'm just gonna do this for the rest of those pieces that we folded on all three. Now, because I'm doing a few, I can chain stitch them just like you would for quilt blocks if you're a quilter at all, which basically means I'm not going to lift it and then have to pull the bobbin thread up every time. I'm just going to feed my second dog bandana along and then I'll just cut them apart at the end. That can be a real time and thread saver. So if you've never done this before, this is what it's gonna look like. You basically have a very small amount of thread right here in between. I'm just gonna snip that, snip that, leave this one on, and then I'm just going to turn this around and do the other side of all three. Back to the ironing board. We have all of the channels stitched. So now what we need to do is we need to fold them right sides together, match the points and match the ends of the channels. And we're just going to press this top edge real quickly on all three. And the next thing is we're going to sew here to here. So I am just going to put a couple little clips just to make sure the fabric stays lined up. You can use pins as well. But to me, this is the perfect kind of project 
to use clips because it doesn't have to be super, super precise and the clips are gonna hold it together just fine. So even though I'm, sh I'm showing, I'm doing three because I'm showing you the three different sizes, this does give you an idea of efficiencies that you can, can use if you're making more than one of any specific project. If you group what you're doing, like do all of this pressing, do all of this sewing, do all of this, for all the ones that you're doing, you're going to be saving time. You can also do that chain stitching like I showed you. Save some thread, save some time not pulling bobbin threads up six times. You just did it once. All right, back to the sewing machine. Now we are just going to be sewing down this side and up this side, basically from channel to channel with a quarter inch seam. And we're gonna come down to this point and we're going to pivot. Now I just wanna give you a little tip. If you're new to sewing or you're teaching kids to sew, this can be really helpful. You can take a ruler, cause we're gonna be turning down here, right? And so you can take a ruler and make a little mark, a quarter inch from that edge. And then you can do the same thing on this side. And then you or they won't have to pay as much attention to where you are based on the foot or the markings on your sewing machine. You can just go to that point, pivot and move. And it's going to be a really big confidence booster for beginning sewists. Even though my machine does have the automatic knot, I'm gonna go back and forth on both ends because we're gonna to have to turn this through this pretty small channel, especially on this small one. And it's gonna put a little bit of strain on that seam. So I like to reinforce it with, by going back and forth. So you'll notice my needle is at that mark or almost, let's see, yeah. It's like a hair before it, now it's a hair after. And these markings on my quarter inch foot are at the edge of the fabric. So that, if I don't mark it, that is how I know that it's time to lift my presser foot and pivot to do a quarter inch on the opposite side. And just like with the last one, we can chain piece these. So I just overlap it where I can, make sure this is going to be lined up with the edge of my quarter inch foot and just move forward. We're in the home stretch. The next thing we need to do is we need to clip our corners. You can either clip it straight across like that, but keep it a little away from the stitching. You do not want to cut the stitching. Or, and I prefer this way, especially with a point like that, is you can come in and take a little bit more off on each side. Because then there's less fabric that has to go in here and it's going to turn to make a better point. And you can just do it from the beginning. You don't have to go straight across first. I just wanted to show you the two ways to go. Now you'll see I didn't get right on that line, but it's fine for a project like this. No one's going to know that it should have been a little bit over. Now, if this was a quilt block, that would have been a problem, but it's not. So we are good to go. Next step, we're going to turn these right side out through the channel. So you need to get the two channels turned out. And then we also need to get this point. And I always do it with my finger first, but that's not a very good point, is it? So I'm going to use this turning tool which is designed to help get these points out. It's not too pointy, you still wanna be careful. You could also use a chopstick or something else that isn't going to mark your fabric, but no matter what you use, make sure you are gentle as you massage that point, because if you go too hard, you could end up with this popping through and then there will be sadness. Now we are going to iron this and I'm gonna make sure that that seam is on the edge so that it's nice and even on both sides. Now we're gonna do the other two. And when I'm getting these seams straight, I just kind of roll it a little bit to massage it to where I want it to be. And for these bigger ones, I'll do one side at a time because it's harder to get both of these sides to stay. So all three of these are pressed. You could just put the collar through without sewing the channel line. So you could leave it like that versus this, so you wouldn't have a stitch line, but you can also make the stitch line match the fabric so it won't really show. But I feel like doing this extra step 
keeps the bandana in place a little bit better. So I always do it, but it's totally up to you. If you like this look without another stitch line on there, try it and see how you like it. You can always come back and add it later if you decide that you're like me and you're like, yeah, you know what, she was right. I wanna put that in there. So what we're gonna do is our grab our pen again, and I'm just going to draw a line that is parallel to this top fold and just about at the end of our channel. The main thing to do is you wanna make sure there's enough space for this hook to go through. So even if we moved it up a little bit, it would be getting a bit tight because this has a little thickness to it too. So that is why we made these channels these specific sizes. Okay, three more lines to sew. Back to the sewing machine. So let me know how you would use these. Are you gonna make seasonal bandanas for your own dogs? A lot of groomers will make quick bandanas for when they groom a dog, they send them home all fancy in a new bandana. Uh, this is also a great thing to sew and sell. This is very basic, very fast way to make them. You can put applique on them. You could make them out of solid colors. And if you are a crafter, you could use your Cricut and add different funny sayings and things like that. I do sell a lot of those on my crafty Etsy shop. I will put a link below this video so that you can find that as well. And anyway, let me know in the comments who you're going to make these for, what size you think you'll do, and happy sewing.